my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. It's beautiful again to see beautiful beaming faces. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise your levels in Jannah, insha'Allah. Say Ameen. Ameen, Rabbil Ameen. My topic today, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, is about Idris and the plots of Shaitan. But before I proceed, I would like to ask a question. Who can tell me briefly what is shirk? Yes? Uh, worshipping another person besides Allah. So basically it means to put a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Correct? No. I'm just highlighting the topic that I want to talk about briefly. Uh, because in my talk, inshallah, I will <coughs> try to relate to how shirk came to existence. But first of all, I would like to uh, mention that Idris, alayhi salam, it's a beautiful story about Idris. He was the sixth grandson of Adam, alayhi salam. Some of you may have read about him or just brushed quickly, you know, listen to a lecture or something. We'll see, inshallah, what happens. <coughs> My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, he was the, uh, Idris was the sixth grandson, and he was at the time of Adam alayhi salam, where Adam alayhi salam كان يعمر أربعة ثمانمائة ثمانمائة وأربعين سنة 840 years they used to go up to a thousand and they were in those days 40 cubits 40 arm lengths tall that's how Bani Adam was he was that big and they're actually finding out now you know huge skulls huge uh, skeletons and so forth but this is the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he reduced man to this size. It's, it's his hikmah. It's his hikmah. Nevertheless, they're finding out about the skeletons, how huge they are and so forth. So, do your research. Besides the point, Idris alayhi salam was a beautiful man. An easygoing person. He was calm. He only spoke what is beneficial and only when he needed to speak, he would speak. Um, he also was tall. He used to walk like the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and he would have his head bowed down, not look up, and he always used to comp contemplate and think much. He was a very, very nice person to, to talk to and to speak to. But he always thought, always thinker, thinking. He's a, he was a thinker. At his time, there was so much corruption. There was so much corruption and injustice. So, he gathered an army because he warned these people you know, to, to be just to the people because there was a lot, a lot of stealing, a lot of killing, a lot of adultery, and so forth. So he didn't like it. So he formed an army to fight against Kabil's people. These were Kabil's people. So he formed an army to fight against injustice. So he fought against them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made an opening for him and he was victorious. Alhamdulillah. Now Kabil started to think also. He started to do what he has to do and a lot of people came to Islam. Uh, he used to give them talks and lectures and so forth. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Idris alayhi salam that whatever deeds that he has accumulated, he will also receive the deeds of all the people that lived in the earth at that time. Did you hear that? He, the deeds that he had was also the deeds he will get 
according to the people's good deeds. So he will get the deeds for them as well. So, mashallah, he was accumulating a lot of good deeds. So he sat there and thought and contemplated and calculated. Then he thought and he said, if I stay longer on the earth, or if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prolonged his life, he will accumulate a lot more deeds. And don't forget, no one enters Jannah except with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this amal, these deeds are light for you, Yom al The iman in your heart and the deeds that you put forth. So the more you accumulate, the more you will have light. For in the, uh, uh, so the, the, not, the darkness is dark, 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 Yom al -Qiyama. So you need light to get to Jannah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him that he will get as much as what other people are getting as well. So he calculated and said, Allahu Akbar, I'm wondering or thinking that if Allah prolongs my life, I will get greater rewards. So he had a, a friend, an angel. Idris had an angel, a friend, he used to come to him, always. So he talked to the angels and, uh, angel and said to him, how can I prolong my life? Can we ask the angel of death, Malik al maut to give me a longer life? Or to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him a longer life? <coughs> and th that angel said, well, we can work, you know, it's worth a try. Why not? We can ask. He said, go onto my back or my wing and I will take you up. So he started going the first heaven. The second heaven, the third heaven, the fourth heaven. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, and we have lifted Idris to the fourth heaven. We have lifted him, makanan aliya, a place that is high. What does that mean? Uh, Abdullah ibn Abbas asked Ubaid. Ubaid, let me recall, let me recall Ubaid. Ibn Ka'ab. And what does that mean? That Rafa'nahu makanan aliya. We have rifted him a high place. What does that mean? He said that when he, he went on the angel and lifted, the angel lifted him to the first heaven, second heaven, third heaven, fourth heaven, they met with the angel of death, Malik al Maut. And they said to him, What are you doing here? He said, I am here with Idris. We want to ask you if we can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to prolong our life. And he said, he looked at them, the angel of death, and he said, Subhanallah. He said, what? Why are you amazed? He said, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me an order to take Idris's life in the fourth heaven. And I was wondering, how am I supposed to do this? How am I going to do it? And in fact, the Prophet ﷺ says in, in Bukhari that when he went to Asra al Ma'raj, he came to Idris alayhi salam, the fourth level, and he met Idris in the fourth level. Allahu Akbar. When uh, he's asked, the angel of death asked him, Where is Idris? He says, He is here. When he, the angel turned around, he saw that his life has ended already. Alhamdulillah. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, it does not end here. Alhamdulillah, those people that he fought against and he established the Sharia, established, established Islam and no corruption at his time, he left. <coughs> when he left, now years went past. <coughs> when he, when, what happened? Years went past. When years go past, now here we have to know something very, very clear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when He created Adam alayhi salam and, uh, and He said to the angels to prostrate to Him before Adam. What did they do? They all prostrated, yeah? All the angels except Iblis, Abba wa Staqbara wa Kala min al kafirin. He became proud. He became arrogant. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came to him. He, says, he said to him, 
what prevented you from what I have created with my own hands? Why did, what has prevented you from bowing? I ordered you to bow. He says, أنا خير من خلقتني من نار وخلقته من طين. I, you have created me from fire and you have created him from tea. I am better. You're questioning Allah? You're questioning Allah? Father did Allah say, get ye down from here. Besides the point, Father did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, he is an avowed enemy to you, so be warned of him. We cannot see him. Who can tell me? I ask this question. The most deceiving thing that Iblis had done to the people. Who can tell me? Who is that person that can tell me this? That, that the most deceiving thing that he made man do. Who knows? Huh? Besides shirk. Besides shirk. I have a prize here for you. Huh? Divorce. What is it? Divorce. Divorce. I understand. Not, that's not what I'm looking for. Okay, I'll let you off the hook. He made man believe that he does not exist. He made man believe he doesn't exist. Oh, come on, you're talking nonsense. But he exists. This is why what is happening, corruption and mischief on the earth, is happening because they don't believe. People don't believe. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned us. And he has told us, he is an avowed enemy to you. What did he say? What did he say? He says, Ya Allah, give me respite. Give me time. Ya Allah, give me time. Then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you are uh, of those who have been given time, then straight away, as soon as he said this, then he says, then I shall surely sit on this sirat. Then I will surely make them go astray from the path. From the path of who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That I will make them go astray from your path. What did Allah say? Illa ibadi salihin. Except the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who even make error but repent, come back to the, to the path. You have no authority over them. Do what you want. So what did he do, Iblis? After certain amount of years, after all these prophets and ulama and, and mashayikh are starting to die off, he came to the first. After Idris died, after two, three hundred years, he comes, he comes in a form of a man. He sits amongst you. You say salam to him, he replies to you. And he grieves. He sits and he grieves. What a beautiful man. What a wonderful prophet. He is a beautiful prophet. But you know what? What, what does he do? He says, you should do something for him. You should do something just for a rock. Just so that you may be reminded of him. So every time you look at the rock, you think, ah, may Allah have mercy on him. Is, that, is there anything wrong with that? At that time, people actually accepted these type of behaviors. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm still worshiping Allah. I'm not doing association. It's just a reminder. Just a rock. There's no, nothing there at the moment. Huh? People are still worshiping Allah. There's nothing there except the rock. You see the rock and you say, may Allah have mercy. He left. Iblis left. Left you for a while. For how many? Three, four hundred years, five hundred years. He is cunning. And very patient. He sows the seed. This is what he had done. He sowed the seed and left. Khalas, left you. Left you alone. Do what you want. No problem. No problem. After three, four hundred years, the ulama have passed away. People used to look up to. The people used to look up to these people. He comes back. Allah. Such beautiful scholars. Amazing. Look at the helm that we have received from these people. Look how cunning and how he plots. What, we, what, what are he's doing? What's wrong with you? People look at him and they say, how much of a pious man he is, this person. So they started to trust him. So when they started to trust him, 
He says to him, you know what? Why don't we just do some drawings? So that we are reminded of that, you know, position that these people held. Look! Just so that we can not forget. Just the drawing on the rocks, as you see in the olden times, that there's like, a, like a, an olden time pictures that people used to draw. And put him there. We're not worshipping. We're not doing anything wrong. So that at that time, the people accepted it. This is what they know. This is what they know up to that level. So they said, yeah, fine. Because the other ulama have passed on. Then those who used to, you used to look up to. Then, this, then he, he goes away. He leaves you. He leaves you. Another three, four, five hundred years. Then comes back. Look at the plot. Then he comes back and these people that you used to look up to, the awliya, he comes up to him and says, man, what wonderful people these are. You know these people? If it wasn't for these people, we would not be where, where we are. We would not have what we have. Why don't you just make a figurine, just carving of a stone? There's nothing wrong with that. Just a carving. Carve it out and put it there and you know, we're not worshipping. We're just making it as what? That we ask these beautiful men to get us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is anything wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. Mind you, all these people, this ulama that used to always constantly remind the people, be careful of this, be careful of that, don't do this, don't do that. These people have died out. So these people started accepting it. Why? Because he told them that please, la'anatullah alayhi, he told them, that these were pious people. These are the people that we need to look up to. You know that they used to do the same as you did? And they used to look up to these people, these figurines that you used to draw and ask them. Because they used to get closer to Allah. So many things that they used to put, he used to put in the people's minds. Now what's a figure? It's nothing. Until again he left them and then another generation has gone past. Another generation has gone past. This is the time of Idris alayhi salam. This is before Nuh alayhi salam. Ignorant time. And when that happened, he came back again after the generation has died out. And he said, look this. We should make a figure. Put faces. These people, they're the ones, you know, your grandparents, your grand-grand-grandparents used to look up to these people. They used to ask them for sustenance. These are the ones that used to provide for them. They used to provide for them. Look, step at a time. Khutwat al shaitan. This is the footsteps of shaitan. Until the people accepted it at that time. And they started. He said to them, and you should really bow your head down. Bow your head down to these people, to these figures. We do not bow our head to anyone but Allah. Even if you see somebody. Your brother, you bow your head, you should not bow your head. This is only, specially, only for Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa alaykum as -salam. Bowing is specially only for Allah. Anyway, going back to the topic, when he told them that, okay, start worshipping these things, the people started to worship. Shirk is born. This is, this is where we are. So this is why the people have taken another path and started to worship their figurines and all these things that they've come up with. Such a pious person. The son of this and the son of that and a snake and a creature, reincarnation, all this rubbish. And they have no proof for it. In fact, I went to Bali once and I came to shops and most of these shops in front of the shops they have little packets and they have food and flowers and I looked and I said what the hell is this for they said oh this is for to get them a blessing and to feed the gods I said to feed the gods why the gods can't feed themselves what the hell is going on I felt like there are shayateen everywhere. I just went there just to see what the fuss is all about. Wallah, there's nothing special. 
nothing special. Bil'aks, I didn't like it whatsoever. I'm not trying to push you away from it, but I'm telling you the facts. This is what happened with me. Besides the points, the Akhwan, this is the shirk that is born, and this is what they're putting into the people. Wallahi, Iblis is cunning. We think we take him for granted. He's not gonna. He's not gonna come to me. He's not gonna be able to say do anything to me. You know, I've got barriers and barriers. You think he's he's been on this earth for nothing, for that long? You think that he hasn't had success with people dying with shirk? Mind you, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Inna Allah yaghfir al-dhunub jamia." He forgives all sin, even shirk. But if you die on shirk, then you are doomed. I give you a small example. And I can't, I, I've, I've said this before. Like one of the lady came to me once and the dog was barking. Remember that? I told you once. And she says, and I said, oh, this dog doesn't like me. And she said, oh, that's my son. <laughs> Joe, George, whatever it is. That's my son. An animal is your son. How is that possible? And I just looked at her and I said, what am I going to say to her? Uh, sit there and argue with her and dog and, 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 and cat? Anyway, let me ask you a question. You have a beautiful home. You have a beautiful home and beautiful furniture. You look after it, your wife cleans it, she makes the place look nice and, and comfortable and, and it make, she makes it look, smell beautiful. But you get yourself a chicken. Okay, you want, a, you, want a, you want that chicken to live with you. Sit on the couch. What's wrong with that? Is there a problem with the chicken living with you? Is there? If there is, tell me what's the problem. Huh? It will eat it later. It's going to be dirty. It's going to make a mess, isn't it? Yeah? It's an animal. It's a beast. Why can't you live with it? Because it's an animal. It's dirty. <clears throat> yeah? You grab it, you put it in there. In the, what's it called, the house? Chicken, Chicken house. <laughs> Why? Why don't you let it live with you? Because it's an animal. It's a dirty animal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, وَخَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانِ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِينَ We have created man in the best of form. In the best? Of form. You are the crown creation of all the creatures on the earth. You are the crown. Now you lowering yourself to an animal, what is that? Even though, why I'm saying this is because I want you to understand something. We are not perfect. We do make errors. We do have showers. Because we have body odor and so forth. We do go to the toilet. Okay? We answer the call of nature. We have, we have to cut our nails. We have to uh, cut our beards. We are not perfect. We are not pure. We are not purified. This is how Allah created you. So what are you? You are a creature that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created here. Now you can't uh, you know, put yourself to a creator who is perfect because you are a creature. He is perfect. He is pure. Perfect. In every way possible, shape or form. Now don't think of him as a, as a bodily thing. Allah is the way, is the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. You have to understand that Allah is perfect. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows him, himself on the throne, the way that befits him. Now for you to say, or the people to say, oh, I, I am, or, or the lady that said to me, that's my son, lower than an animal, it's not befitting. Why are you lowering your category? This is an animal, this is a human. Now, we are creatures, we cannot, uh, you know, uh, put ourselves close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is pure, a perfect God. 
Once Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or they say that he becomes part of the creation, he is no longer befitting to be a God. Allah is separate from his creation. He is separate from that. We need to understand that very importantly. Alhamdulillah, insha'Allah, bi'ithnillah, that, that insha'Allah we will enter Jannah and see Allah. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Because Allah is pure, perfect, light upon light. And if, inshallah, people want to know more about you know, the, the, the appearance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, go to my YouTube and, and listen to my talk. How he's got hijab and his hijab is light and, and beauty upon beauty upon beauty. You cannot describe it. And we haven't seen Allah yet, but he's telling you just his hijab. How beautiful it is. How magnificent! Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he was to take that hijab off, he would burn everything inside. That's how perfect Allah is. That's how beautiful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. So this is just a reminder of how shirk started. And we need to, you know, take away ourselves away from that path that shaitan or iblis, and he, he hates it, so trust me. He hates all uh, the human Muslims, in fact, the Muslims in particular, the others he has got already. He doesn't need them. He comes to you. How much? Five minutes. So, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, wallahi, wallahi, this is sincerely from my heart. Try to, as much as you can, to uh, divide yourself from that understanding of how these people have come to, as I told you, how shirk has come. It has come in a, in a form, not directly like that, but in a step at a step at a time. To what? To manipulate, manipulate your thinking, to indoctrinate your thinking. Oh, look at the world, it's just normal. It's, come on, don't tell me that there's another life form, which, as I told you before, that he made the man think that he doesn't exist. There is, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us. He sees you from a place you do not see him. And it will be vice versa, inshallah, when we are in that place. But what you need to do is try to work as much as you can hard in this life to attain that blissful place which is of the highest Jannah. But we need to work. And I said to you before that your iman in your heart and especially when a person is dying, the bliss comes at that particular moment. It doesn't leave you alone. Your iman is your light, your malqiyama. And what you put forth with your hands is light, your malqiyama. And it is dark. Dhul, la dhul. Illa, uh, uh, that's, that's another verse. La dhul illa dhul illa azza wa But it is dark upon darkness and you are not able to see anything except with that light that you have you have accumulated from this earth so i tell you inshallah from uh, sincerely from my heart to try to hold on especially at the time of death we have uh, our dear brother uh, sheikh ahmed's mother passed away uh, only uh, five days ago and uh, alhamdulillah, she was, she was uh, not a hafiz, but she memorized as much as she can from the Qur'an. And she used to always read the Qur'an, page to page. And she had read it many times, mashallah. And this Qur'an is your, inshallah, your savior. Because the Qur'an will come and say, if there is any punishment that's going to come to you, it will stop the, the punishment and say, he used to read me. No, I will not allow you. It's a protection for you. Inshallah. So try to memorize because every time you memorize the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lifts your level up. Every time you memorize, He lifts your level up. Every time you memorize, He lifts your level up. And there are many, and there's a hundred levels, and every level has got a hundred, hundreds as well. Wallahi, sincerely from my heart, try as much. Even if you are not able to read the Akhi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, the Prophet said that even those who read and like that when they read it they are rewarded for that try it's never too late read read as much as you can try to uh, to implement it if you can 
جزاكم الله خير أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك